Welcome back to episode 4 of Septic Ages of the Sky, and today we're solving the whole Abyssal Craft thing, at least the start of Abyssal Craft. I've just been casting out some uh, bronze and some of the copper and tin uh, in blocks. I will be needing some of those later. Uh, do I have any left? I need to go mine more, uh, mine more copper. I've got a full stack of Corallium gems. We are going to be using those. Uh, we may as well just craft them into what we need now. Uh, which is two, if I remember rightly, of these Corellium Gem Clusters. And then you're going to need to combine those with some stone, and uh, then that will be cooked up into Corellium Pearl. Do I have enough stone? Of course I don't, so let me just... I um, don't know, maybe I do, maybe I do. Let's just craft them and put them around. There we go. Yep. And Corellium Infused Stone. So we can then throw that into our grill, which is... Uh, we can craft the regular furnace now, and I have but the regular furnace takes fuel and to be honest the grill doesn't so uh and uh, it you know it, it's automated as far as that's concerned so uh i fact, let's just let's just cook those up now yeah and now i want to show you the shock off farm because i improved things and it's working quite well in fact they already generated some statues um all by themselves so i don't have to craft them which is amazing i don't have to go and do that all over again and i'll show you how to do that as well so you can see i've got a stack and a half of sugar flesh it's more than enough and i've got a couple of stacks of monolith stone which is enough the monolith stone gets generated by them when we do the whole when they do the whole pillaring thing so let me just go and grab various bits and pieces um to head west not to uh, not north and you can see I've just been basically putting in more apiaries and getting more hemp. We're going to be needing the hemp pretty soon as well. So that's going to be uh, good to see. Um, that means basically the start of uh, immersive engineering. So let's go over to our Shoggoth farm. And while we're heading over there, I'll describe I've changed. So if you remember the last episode, you had this hole into the Shoggoth and you sort of uh, just basically swipe your sword there but well, we can improve on that we can make a kill box for them and assuming that they've not all just decided not to spawn anymore which is always possible um then we can go over here and uh, kill them so you can see i've got two totems or three totems actually i think i may put the wrong thing in one of them but uh, i've got pigs in one so we get full look and you can see i've got night vision slow to speed strength and resistance three uh resistance two even uh, are they still in there they are still in there okay so here was my original box and you can see where the line is right here that's where it was last episode i built a kill box on the outside of it uh i saw a guide on reddit or at least a written guide on, on how to do this and they said it worked so i thought i'd give it a try and it did so you can see with this model of stone here it's sticking straight through my kill box um, that means it's replaced this stone, but don't worry if it does because they can't break through monolith stone either. It's too hard for them to do so, uh, and it's quite uh, quite difficult for, for me to even get through it, even with uh, bronze tools. So, um, yeah, that's pretty good. So I built a three by three by three and a half high internal. So if you have a look here, uh, let's just show you on this side. So this is three by three this is the internal size but below this there's half slabs and below that there are whopper mark twos so if i pop down here i tried this with whopper mark once it didn't work um i wish it did because they're cheaper and easier to get string but the the network just feeds everything into this crate and just above these is a half slab so uh they the whoppers do let you uh, do pull through the half slab and sometimes the mobs break the half slabs, to be honest, but it's perfectly fine as far as that's concerned. Let's just see if we can attract the attention of one or two. Um, are you going to go over here? Maybe I need to go and uh, say hello a little bit. And they see half slabs. And uh, uh, there's some friends. Okay, now they can't get out of there. They will occasionally hit you if you get too close, and you have to get close to hit you hit them. But given I've got all the, the wolf, the pig, and everything else, I can just basically uh, go and see if I can find it. There we go. So once you find that, you see you're taking them down quite quickly. It's about 11 or 12 health per one, and then it should bring everything down into here, which it has. So nice and safe Shogoth flesh farm. And obviously, when you get enough of them in this small room, they decide to go and erect a new, um, a new, a new monolith essentially. So uh, yeah, you can get lots of free statues that way. I've got three tourer repeat, so I'm, uh, I may just craft the rest to be honest, because hey, I've already got uh, some of them, and that that saves on crafting. Back at the base, I wanted to cover a couple of things. One, I've just robbed out the trunk of that, uh, that oak tree. Uh, I'll need to go and complete that in a minute. But a couple of things I wanted to cover. Um, first of all, are these. These are apple sprouts. So they're very, very simple to make. Apple 
uh, you just basically combine sticks and that, and you plant them under seat underneath the leaves, and they will produce apples. They will also give you more sprouts back than you started with, so you can spread this out to produce a nice little apple farm that you don't have to actually craft um, an apple tree with. You can craft an apple tree with apple seeds, and for that you need a crushing tub. Put apples in it, you get fruit juice, uh, apple juice, and you get apple seeds, which you can then use uh, to plant an apple tree. However, crushing tub can also get you water as well, so you can use that with sugarcane. It'll get you water and sugar if you didn't have an infinite water source, but um, we do, <laughs> uh, around here somewhere, there it is, and so that's, uh, we don't actually need to do that at all, uh, at least not for the moment, so you can get uh, honey crushed into beeswax that way as well, but again, I don't need that right now. However, uh, moving on, the other thing I should mention is the crushing, uh, not the crushing tub, I just said that, uh, the wooden basin. This is uh, the tripling or more, depending on what you're actually doing, I think, of leather and other stuff. So if you have a look at the basin, you can use this to make uh, soak mulberry bark from mulberry bark. It's important because you need to go through that process and you get washi, which you can then uh, make into your first piece of parchment for our little sorcery with aquamarine. And aquamarine, you have to actually go and find. It's not from the ore type. It's uh, from, again, the similar kind of things that we've got right now oh, we have to find a rock crystal island of that i think if I remember rightly or something or maybe no it's, it's actually in the beneath i think uh, anyway we need to get to that which is again through abyssal craft but the other thing you can use the basin for is uh leather so if you want to triple leather you get three dried hides uh, you still have to go through that process of salting the hides unfortunately and that can be done again uh through the wooden basin and you get three salted hides but once it's dried you can do three at once here with resin and then you can do three leather at once so if you want to do that that's all good there's a lot of plenty of other stuff you can do with a wooden basin but those are the most important things for us right away oh one of the use if you uh, have available horses and i, I do is uh, you can now just basically grind wheat into uh into flour and the flour uh, if we have a look at it flour uh we can put through the wooden basin three at a time with our infinite water source and some salt and we get dough, and that will let us make regular bread rather than um, just whatever we've been using uh, now. Um, clearly, I need to rebalance this. So we're just going to go for regular bread for a while, but then we'll combine grain and protein with the sandwich that I was talking about before. So a sandwich, uh, we can just do two at once with that. So any, any basically bread, but any sort of cooked meat should make this sandwich, and you can make quite a lot of these at once once uh, everything's ground down. So yeah, pretty simple to make, but of course we'll have better ways of, of producing that later. Ooh, more apples uh, very, very quickly and uh, easy to replant as well. It'd be nice if I could just right click to replant them, but unfortunately, uh, or right click to take the apple and then leave a sprout on the tree, but you can't really do that, unfortunately. So uh, that's good, and just keep keep collecting hemp uh, everywhere you see it and replant until you've got a decent amount, which I now have, three by three, that should do for that. And uh, more potatoes, just in case we want uh, more vegetables. Okay. So we've got lots of stuff growing, I've got rice down here. Rice, mainly for the slime balls, uh, more than anything else, uh, you can make those and uh, do stuff with them that you could do with regular slime, so it's useful to have them at least. Alright, so moving on, next thing to actually do is looking at Abyssal Craft. Now, there's a couple of warnings here. Uh, we need to make a few things. Uh, it's shown in the quest guide, uh, not age 0, age 1. Um, we need to make this, the Beneath Portal. Use an Abyssal Craft Ritual to create the Beneath Teleporter, and we need to charge it up. We need to have PE, Potential Energy, I think, if I remember rightly. And to do that, we need to get, um, yes, we need to get a, a pedestal. Um, there are a few different types of pedestal. The one you want initially, and this is very useful to have anyway, technically you don't need the pedestal to do this, you could just stand in the near statues with your Necronomic on, but bad things will happen to you if you do. I did, I have told you, I have told you this, but bad things will happen. We need a thousand PE to actually do this next ritual, and that uh, is where Shadow Gems come in, Corallian Pearls come in, and a Monolith Stone. It's almost like we've been collecting this on purpose. So I think all of those we actually have. So let me just see if uh, well, I should have finished cooking up by now. Yep, there's two Corallian Pearls. I've got my Shadow Gems up here somewhere. Uh, well, one Shadow Gem, that, that will do, and one Stone. So 
I'm going to go and craft one of those. Yep, pedestaling for time. But there is another type of um, pedestal as well that we want to put uh, the statues on. It's this. The, just four monolith stones. You get monostone pillar, not pedestal. That's why I couldn't uh, see it in the list. And I want seven of those. Yeah, seven. There are seven different types of statues, and we've got two already types from the... Um, the farm over at the Shoggoth place. We need to get the rest of the statues, however. So that's where dyes come in. So all of the statues, if you look them up, uh, all have a decorative version, and we're gonna use those decorative versions to craft the remaining other ones, and they all need different colors of dye powder. That's where your um, your dyes that you've hopefully been collecting from flowers uh, get used by uh, your mill. So if you just throw the rest of these in here, uh, those two and maybe the dandelion. You'll see I've been getting some dyes out of here. So we've got blue. I could do with more blue, unfortunately. But purple, uh, white is going to be used, definitely. Black's definitely going to be used. Orange, definitely. Uh, some of those may actually be other statues I already have. But you're going to want to just grind everything up that you find and uh, then you can produce statues. You don't need all seven statues, but having them is a kind of a nicety. So I'm going to go and craft those. Um, we're going to put them on uh, the pedestals, uh, so not the energy pedestal, but the, the, the monolith stone pillars, and we need to go and craft a, basically build a platform somewhere. I would suggest you build it at least 32 blocks from wherever your base is, uh, from any, uh, any, any extent of your base, basically. So 32 blocks that way, maybe we can put a platform in, or you can use another island. Uh, I think I just want a platform because I just want to run there when necessary. Uh, and have the uh, an altar set up for collecting PE, uh, collecting potential energy, and also one for um, doing the ritual. You don't have to put them next to each other, but it's handy to have them around. But to do all of that, you're going to want to probably build some of it out of monolith stone, at least the bits around the uh, the collecting altar, because the, the various bad effects you can get there once it starts collecting is horrible and uh, it can't break monolith stone so it's useful to have it and then uh, if shoggoth spawn over there and they can do that as well um they won't start gunking up monolith stone it, they don't spread their stuff on top of it so useful to have it that way so i'll have to build a bit of a platform okay for a bit of construction later do be aware that in this age you can build or at a certain point you can build a stone wand uh, it's just very simple to build just a couple of logs and a piece of stone and makes it much easier to build uh, lots of platforms and everything else that you're going to need to be doing in a scout block anyway. So useful to have that available uh, as you actually go. Anyway, onwards with the abyssal craft stuff. I've built this sort of platform over here just with a bit of a cage around uh, our book. And you can just see uh, here it's got 70 energy in it. I'm probably not close enough for it to charge just yet. I just want to check with this, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, all the statues are there. And you'll see all seven of them. They're all on these stone pillars and they're all surrounding this energy pedestal that we crafted. So that's all good. And it, the rest of it is just made from the monolith stone, just so that the floor doesn't drop out with lightning strikes and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so otherwise we got seven statues. Anyway, moving on, uh, you, and this is about 32 blocks away from the base. So you may need to stand a bit close for it to remain in, um, charging mode but you just go afk with your, your inventory open or something oh i did notice a brown bear that keeps spawning no matter how much i light the place up i think it's just a natural spawn uh some built-in mechanic i can't find anywhere that's not lit up so um yeah uh, that is very very dangerous however it does kill me occasionally but since it's on my own island my death compass doesn't change so there's no big deal there uh, can i change this into an altar so i've got them two away from the center and one away in each of their diagonals. Yep. So that will change into our ritual altar, and then I can then surround this with whatever decorative blocks I like, uh, maybe this limestone or something. Uh, so that's gonna be what we're gonna be doing to basically do all the rituals. So if we look at the beneath portal now, uh, here it is. Uh, this block is not monolith stone in the center. It's a, a special block, even though it looks just identical. They're all black. It's, that's why I don't quite like this thing. So you need four monolith stones, you need blank teleporters. That needs blocks of coal. It needs apprentice blood orb. That's blood magic. We're about to go into that section. 
more Corellian Pearls, Black Dye Powder, and then blocks of all the metals we have access to. So the main thing right now is a plenty of Bloodstone, and you can't use Redstone yet, so we can't use that recipe. That needs another Corellian Pearl, that's why you needed a stack of Corellian, or even a half a stack would have probably done fine. Um, but that is a Tier 2 Blood Altar, so we need to then basically craft a Blood Altar and do the Blank Runes uh, to get to a Tier 2. If you're familiar with Blood Magic, we'll go through it, don't worry. But to even get a Blood Altar, you need lots of obvious stuff, but also Demonic Will. Demonic Will you get from Snares, which are relatively easy to craft in this pack. It's four tin ingots, four string, and some ash, which is just any wood smelted up. So we're going to craft some of those, and we already have a mob farm over in our Darklands area, so that looks going to be quite beneficial to, to do this with. So first of all, I'm going to put this Necromonicon back on its charging pedestal, and we'll leave it alone while we uh, work our way down to uh, Blood Magic. So first of all, it's crafting those snares. Okay, I've got 24 snares, just crafted up, and then let's just go and see what is currently in our um, <laughs> in our mob farm. Um, I don't have any much water. Oh, oh. Ah, there we go. Don't have much water to actually land in these days over here, but uh, let's go and take a look. So we've got our spear and uh, some snares, so that should be good. What we're looking for is white particles. Now, what I don't know is because I have shaders on whether those white particles will show up. Let's give it a try. Normally I try with skeletons, so let's throw that at the skeleton. It will damage it a little bit, but we're just looking for it to change from one type to another and start to see white sort of particles. Yes, it's rather expensive to do. Those, those are the white particles, so we just want to kill that whichever one that is. <laughs> Finding the right one is... Uh... There we go, and we get our first uh, Demonic Will. You need to get more than one, however, uh, two or three at least to be comfortable to start with. So again, just keep on throwing your snares until you get some more Demonic Will, and then we're ready to get into Blood Magic. Ooh, there's one. Hello, you. Uh, where are you? They don't last too long either, so if you miss out, you miss out. Uh, I think there is another one in there, yep. Yep, there is. So I've got two, I'll get a third one, and we'll come back um, to craft the blood stuff, really, the blood altar. Okay, the blood altar itself will be quite straightforward to craft, just uh, basically bits and pieces. Um, use the demonic wheel, use the smallest quality one possible. Um, this one is the smallest one I've got, uh, just because you want the higher quality ones for later, I would imagine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. That gets us into blood magic with the sanguine Santiam. Uh, someone will correct my pronunciation in the comments, no doubt. Uh, and that will uh, be useful. Oh, I need some place to put this now. I'm not going to make a huge altar or anything at the start. You don't need it. Uh, just a tier two will be fine, which means you need almost no space for that. So let's just put it uh, let's just put it here for now. So blood altar. We need a sacrificial dagger. So hopefully that is sacrificial. Uh, hopefully that's not too difficult to craft. No, it's just a sharp bone and a couple of pieces of bronze. Sharp is just a regular bone, and you just hit, do the th same thing you do with a deflate flint. Uh, let's just see where I've put mob drops uh, in here. I've already got a, a semi-repaired one that just dropped from something, but uh, that's, that's fine. We'll use something else, and I think I have some bronze. I've got like seven blocks of copper already, but uh, it's bronze that we actually need for this. So let's just uh, basically, there we go. We get a sharp bone, and we can just craft the sacrificial dagger. Good, right, now, now for the painful part. Here's where you get to rebalance your nutrition. Uh, because you're going to be eating a lot of food. We don't have any way of regening right now. None of the totems give you regen, I've checked. So uh, we're going to have to just live with it. Uh, what we actually need is slates. Um, uh, is it not slates? Sorry, runes, blank runes. Yeah, each of those, they need uh, a blood orb, which we need to get to first. And then they need blank slates. So we're going to need eight of these for a tier two altar, which means we need 16 blank slates. And they are just regular stone put through your blood altar. A tier one is just fine for that. Uh, so I need to cook up some more stone. Let's just put, no, oh, I'm, I'm nearly, nearly out of stone. Let me just throw some more in the smelter. Uh, and, uh, oh, that's not going to smelt. Ah, there we go. Throw some more in the smelter and we'll get the stone later. Uh, however, we to do that we need a uh, the blood orb and um, blood orb. Yes, so we need coagulated blood or we need a diamond which we can't have because it's unfamiliar in this stage. So we got to go with coagulated blood first. So to do that we have to uh, basically get blood into this, 
and you can cook up uh, basically rotten flesh to get 40 millibuckets of blood. So I want um, rotten flesh times four. That's 31 of it. I have been saving up and I don't think I need anywhere near this much, but that, that should be fine. And uh, this is currently probably cooking up. It's probably run out of, uh, yeah, it's run out of charcoal. Uh, but it has been cooking up uh, lots of copper for me. So I'm just going to go and replace this. I won't even really just strip those out. That should be fine. Yep. And we'll just put in our rotten flesh and just nab the charcoal from here. And that should not take long at all to actually cook up our flesh, at which point you want to pour it this direction, not that direction. Uh, it should form into an orb in here. I don't think we need any kind of casting whatsoever. It's just pouring uh, that straight away. Casting. Yeah, so it should be perfectly fine uh, to do. In the meantime, head for your blood altar and uh, yes, donate, donate blood to the blood god, uh, bl uh, blood altar and uh, away you go and you can start eating food as soon as you need it and you'll see your nutrition quickly rebalance as you heal. Uh, obviously meat's probably better for this job, it will just get the job done quite a bit faster but uh, for the time being um, we can just do whatever we need to do, just rebalance nutrition. You need at least 2000 life points in this so it's probably worthwhile just going ahead and just filling it up um just so that you, you know it's full we don't have anything to, to well ah no 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 uh, we don't have anything to uh to basically figure out um how full it is yet that's later on in the mod but uh just look at look at it until it's full basically and uh, donate uh, donate your life essence there we go so we got uh all the blood we need pour that out that should change yeah there it is it's changing you've got a quite a good your blood so fill it up throw the blood in wait for it to change and you've got yourself your first blood orb Okay, one full blood orb and a blood altar even, and my nutrition's coming up to the sheer amount of food I've been actually eating. Let's just dump our coagulated blood orb in there and we'll get the first tier of blood orb. Now the second tier, as I said, needs a corallium pearl, but we've already got that, but we need the tier two altar first. So I need to go and create lots and lots of those slates, uh, 16 of them to be exact. Yes, 16 of these, and you're gonna to to do this one at a time. So when this finishes, 2,000 life points will have gone out of this, so 3,000 will remain. So technically I can do three, and then uh, I just need to carry on and do the rest of this stack of 16. Uh, but do remember when this turns into a blood orb, uh, do immediately shift right click it when you pick it up so it binds it to you and then your life point network. So uh, that is good. So yep, let's just wait for that to finish and then onward with the slates. And we're finished, so pick it up, shift right click, and that's that job done, and uh, onto the slates. And much donating of our life points later with a dagger, uh, yes, we're okay to go and then craft uh, everything we need here, which is all of the runes. And uh, we can craft eight of those, that's perfectly good. And then we're just going to want to rip up the ground around the altar, and then we should be okay. So if I just grab uh, my sort of trowel, and by the way, I've been attacked by bears so many times now, we can actually make a special Paxel. <laughs> I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let me just grab these and we can just drop our um, Corellian Pearl into the top and off it'll go. That's a full altar again, so that should change into our Apprentice Blood Orb just fine. Uh, yes, uh, bear Paxels. Let me just uh, have a look at this. Uh, odds and ends, is it? Uh... Oh, and uh, but wild dog uh, pelts, I forgot about those. Uh, I, I did get those last episode and I do want to craft those. Uh, so wood products, yes, let's just get that. So a Paxel is going to be like this, I think. Yeah, so a bear claw Paxel. Okay, so um, let's just see if this is much better than anything else. So my trowel is probably the fastest and then I've got a bronze axe as well, just so we can compare the two. So uh, that's instant break for uh, that so that's good how about for trees uh, move move it horse move move oh horse too many horses i i literally you i went and specifically got rid of them all threw them all off the edge i turned around and there was foals and horses on the other side of the island you literally just can't get rid of them and uh, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good paxel however at the same time um if i have to repair it by getting extra bear claws I'm not sure how long it's going to last, but I have one, I have one, and we'll, well, let me just chop that rest of that tree down. Uh, it's slightly faster, I think, than the 
yeah, slightly faster than the bronze tool, so I'll keep it for now until it wears out, and then we can always uh, replace it later. But two tool, uh, one tool inside of two tools is worthwhile doing, so at least we've got those. And then I can just throw the rest of the odds and ends. Wild dog pelts, what does that take? That takes feathers, that's why I haven't crafted it yet. Glue is fine. Uh, leather boots is again fine, we can make that, but feathers, I don't have chickens yet. Hemp fibers, easy enough. You basically take your hemp, wherever you're growing it, over here, and uh, take this stuff, and then throw it into your uh, millstone uh, over here. And then you stand on top and use up food and, and hand cranking, and you'll get the fibers, which I've got uh, 36 of in here. I've been doing that in the background. So yeah, worthwhile doing, but uh, not just yet. So I'm going to want to come back for that once I have enough feathers. I need like 16 feathers. So I need to go and get uh, some chickens hunted up or owls, they'll drop it as well. And in the distance, it looks like our apprentice blood orb is done. So grab that, shift right click, and that is also bound to us. We don't need the other one, I don't think, anymore, but we'll just store it away anyway. So that is then, let's just go and look at the beneath portal again, beneath. Uh, we've got demonic will now, dark oak fence gate. I can go and get some more dark oak. I think I've used it all. Uh, monolith stone we got blank teleporter we've not yet cold dust and cool gunpowder this is why you need the coal island you explicitly have to get gold coal dust it can't be charcoal dust and then the blank teleporter we have we can make another crawlion pearl black dye block of coal again uh, i think you can just press yeah you're just going to press some coal so we have everything we need for that so literally the only thing we need is perhaps some more um some more dark oak i think so I think we're ready once once my Necromonicon has charged. Actually, I think the statues are all one too close to actually. I think they need a couple of spaces. Sorry, it's getting a little bit dark. I need to actually let's just sleep through the night. I think they need to be a little bit further away. It's charging when it's in my inventory, the Necromonicon, but not charging when it's on the pedestal, and the pedestal isn't collecting either. So it's probably just a, a distance issue. Uh, it'll probably be, it'll be in the Necromonicon itself. And I'll have just ignored it as, as normal. So let's just put these down and let's see whether this is actually going to start actually charging now. Either that or it will be a height issue with, you know, these and the, the pedestal. Nope, that's working now. So they are charging with it on the pedestal. So I can even take that away and uh, come back later. So that's perfectly fine. We just need to wait for that to charge. And um, yeah, we'll be ready for the ritual, I think, uh, just with a bit of other bits and pieces. And speaking of Ed's odds and ends, I just had to go and get those feathers. I need these boots, so I went and did, went and did a whole crafting process uh, to create the bundle of feathers. But uh, other than that, we have everything we need, I think, apart from the leather boots. And I have some leather, so we can make some leather boots. I have some on, but they're, they're not, uh, we're not repaired at the moment, so let's just craft these. And then we have wild dog boots, and the hemp fibers uh, came back. Uh, so if we swap those out, we should... Uh, we should be able to run faster. Yeah, that's much faster at running. But while moving normally, eh, then we should move at normal speed and we can jump a lot higher. So, yep, very, very worthwhile having to move around. Oh, we have climbing gloves yet. We do climbing gloves for climbing. No, no. Okay, that's going to need another age to get to climbing gloves. Basically, rather than using the totems, I'd rather be able to jump at walls myself. Uh, let's just go and see how, very quickly, how my whole ritual thing is going let's let's just take a look are you fully charged you are fully charged and run away again <laughs> lightning bolts do hit that that whole thing uh, that's why you don't build it too close to your base uh, also all kinds of bad things of course but uh mainly the sound of the lightning you can't actually control it with any of the sound options in the uh the, the options of the game which makes it really annoying to try and uh, deal with when, when you're trying to actually play and record uh, yes, so we've got a full Necronomicon, which means we can get to the ritual. Okay, we have everything we need for the blank teleporter block now, and that is that done. We then just need to assemble the ritual, so I'm going to go sleep through the night, and let's go and do the ritual over there. So blank teleporter goes in the middle. One, two, three, four monolith zones. Gunpowder goes there. Coldus goes here. Uh, we want the Dark Oak Fence Gate, and we want what's at the top, the Demonic Will, I think. Yeah, Demonic Will. Grab our... Oh, do we need the Apprentice Blood Oil for this? Am I misremembering? No, we don't. That's perfectly fine. That's for the Blank Teleporter. Yeah, so that's all good. We don't need that, which means we just need our book, uh, a Necronomicon, which is back here, I think. Oh, 
so nice with these. So nice with these boots. There's an Necronomicon. It's fully charged, so we should only should need a thousand to get this going. And uh, shift right click. Buster, Buster, Buster. Yep. Um, so that happened. <laughs> and once this is done with all the particles, which are pretty pretty good, let's just put the fire out. We have our beneath teleporter. Now the beneath is very, very, very dark. And also it is filled with islands like this, so it is along with the theme of everything else, which is a sky block. I think the only one that isn't like that that I know of is between lands, so uh, yeah. But this um, is going to take us somewhere uh, dark, and also every island, because it's dark, has it full of hostile mobs. So there's two ways of dealing with hostile mobs. One is to fight them all in an epic battle of uh, wits and bravery, and the other is to avoid them entirely. Um, which, which do you think I'm going to do? Here we are, to unlock the whole Astral Sorcery chain and to unlock the Mechanical Power chain leading to the bucket at the end. Uh, we need to head into the Beneath, so I'll put a little platform down near our um, Ritual Altar. And you have to put it one above the ground on both sides, you can't sink it into the ground. I normally sink these into the ground that are like single blocks. But away we go, off to the Beneath. Uh, it may take a, a minute to, to respond, but uh, once that happens, we'll uh, head off there. Yep, there it goes. It's going to generate the dimension, which is full of islands, and uh, yeah, it's going to be very, very dark. So let me, even though it has torches, which apparently didn't actually affect anything until the block update. Okay, now they do. And you can see nothing. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, it's very, very dark indeed. So what I'm going to do is probably turn off shaders just for this part of the whole exploration. Okay, with the shaders off, it's still black and purple and uh, very hard for see me to see, let alone you guys. So what I'm going to do here is uh, just do the usual thing of uh, just getting a uh, totem whittling knife. And let's just go to tot ah, totem base. I missed. Uh, totem. Ugh. I'm going to go the other way. It'd be nice if I went the other way, please. There we go, totem base. And then it's going to be Enderman, I think, for night vision. Um, hopefully that's going to help. Are you going to kick in? Night vision? This is night vision? Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> Can we just apply it multiple times? Or oh, more, more night vision, please? Uh, apparently not. Uh, yeah, so there is an island up there, and uh, it is relatively close to where we spawned. And if you put the thing in the same location I did, then that's cool. Uh, do be, do make sure that when you do get into your uh, beneath area, you put in a marker for home because your death compass is just going to be spinning around all over the place. It can't find anything in here. So uh, yeah, just take that with a grain of salt. And uh, is there anything else that I can put on here? I don't think there's anything else that I really want right now. Um, greed is not going to help for luck or anything. What I actually want is up there. So I brought some dirt. Uh, you can go and fight the mobs if you want to. That, that's, a, that's a perfectly, perfectly okay way of doing things. Uh, however, I uh, I can maybe improve on that a little bit. So one staircase coming up, I think. And uh, see you in just a second. And here we are. One crazy staircase later, full of just earth. We have Aquamarine Ore and we have Black Quartz Ore. Now I did bring along a weak Dazzling Rod, but it's really not much point in these particular islands because you can just spot them on the sides and pick one. Now if it, you don't have an island close enough to you, what I'd suggest you do is you can jump onto the island, drop some torches, quickly jump back off the island, go away 100 blocks or 200 blocks, come back and then they will spawn in that area that's lit up and then rinse and repeat and you'll you'll be able to do the same thing that I am just with a bit more a uh, bit more trouble uh, so it's not really much uh, much trouble once you get going but uh, yeah that's uh, worthwhile for me to actually do it this way because it's just so close to the to the entrance okay so uh, from that then we can um, we can go and start basically mining out the uh, crystal and we also want the um, uh, what was it called aquamarine yes aquamarine there it is, so let's just go and grab some of that. That should give us an achievement, maybe. Yep, search for Aquamarine. So we want uh, quite a few pieces of this. I, I go 16, 32, something like that, before we actually go back. We can always come back here, of course, and I will turn the shaders on once we get back out, but um, just having it available here, although there's a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes, 
uh, going around the edges of this thing. If I remember rightly, uh, on the the beneath, all of the ores are on the kind of outside of the islands, like where we're stood right now, rather than um, you know on top or right in the middle. So. Yeah, you have to be a bit careful when you're actually uh, gathering it. But otherwise, let's go and grab some of the black quartz, which is above us. Okay, and this is uh, still in the ore form. We're going to have to process that, I think. And we can just grind it with a horse into crushed black quartz, so there's no problem there. Or indeed the millstone. So I'm off to do a bit of mining. And back with the shaders on at the base, uh, it's time to just finish off this episode with a final bit of crafting. I wanted to get this made, the Qu Black Quartz AIOT, or all-in-one tool. So to do that, uh, yes, we're just going to grab the crushed Black Quartz that's being produced by our Valiant Horse over there, and we're just going to throw it straight through a stone grill. This is just basically all the tools crafted as one, and then just basically combined in a crafting grid, so we should be able to do that quite easily. And there we go, final tool crafted, all five together, and we have a black quartz AOT. So we shouldn't need those anymore, I don't think. That will save space on our tool, our toolbar, and uh, let's just throw those back in. There. So that should do for now, and nice and clean. So I do like the ability just to use one tool when necessary. Let's just go and take a look at it. It's got 1100 and something, uh, 1120 durability. So we should just be able to mine with it just fine. Yes, we can. And get rid of uh, Earth just fine. And of course, we should also be able to uh, base produce farmland. He says, looking for farmland possibly that could be turned. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. so everything's working as expected. And of course, um, yeah, huge amounts of durability, and you just need more black quartz to, to basically um, upgrade it. So that's good, that's good for now. Uh, you can also make black quartz, uh, or quartz armor. Uh, yeah, let's just look for black quartz, and then it should, yeah, should bring things down in terms of complexity. So that's just black quartz, but it is quite good armor. Uh, three for there for the chest piece it's six and then one so let's look at other stuff maybe bronze how does it compare to bronze stuff uh five so six and then one obviously better than five so i'm just gonna basically make up a whole bunch of this and then get myself a decent amount of armor because uh we're coming kind of going up to dimensions where you're going to need lots of protection pretty soon uh, let's just take that uh, backpack off there and uh yeah so we got armor and we can fill it up with the other pieces and while I do have the boots, um, I don't necessarily always want to wear them because I kind of like the uh, the immunity to fall damage and other bits and pieces from this. Uh, these are they're not too much different, to be honest, with the wild dog boots. So I'm just going to leave them alone for now and have everything else made of black quartz. And we've got the tools there. There we go. So I think that's pretty much it for the episode. Good to get going. Last thing we're going to need in this age, which is going to be the start of next episode, is going to be uh, the astral sorcerer, which is now unlocked. Uh, you see, we've got half of the quartz unlocked. You don't get that when you get the ore, only when you process it into the, the black quartz uh, itself. And then we've got uh, mechanical power coming up, and that needs its own sort of setup. You need a few bits and pieces. So uh, we're going to need axles, um, and that's hemp and black quartz, hemp rope, that is. So that's why I've had hemp around somewhere. Yeah, over here. I've moved the apples up so they can grow all the rows and this can be turned into uh, the hemp fibers with um with your hand crank uh that's going to take up a lot of hunger but um that's by the by so in between the episodes you can go and do that and then you're going to need about say about four axles to start maybe maybe less but um yeah four four axles to start and then we also need a gearbox and a water wheel. So if we just have a look at that, so water wheel, I've got them here, I think. Yes, I do. So copper gears, which need stone gears, which need wooden gears, and we can make those without buffalo teeth. So that's easy enough to make. And then wood blades, which is uh, cognitive bird muck, or it should just be glue. Yeah, glue and just wood. So that's easy enough to make. And then you may want one or two gearboxes. So that means we can make some wood gears, some plates, and again some more axles so again all of those things are straightforward to actually make i'm going to make them off camera and then at the start of next episode we'll set up the water wheel and then see if we can start up with a decent setup for getting a saw running which is what we need to get to astral sorcery because 
the mulberry tree that you have around wherever you are. You can't just strip and bark off it with your wood blade. You actually have to uh, use a saw. So we need the saw available to us. So I'm going to go and go uh, harvest the mulberry trees I see and go and pick up the saplings. And we'll see you at the start of the next episode for some mechanical power and then into the next age, I believe. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, click on the like button down below. But more importantly, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications, particularly if you want to know when a new episode is available, if you're following along. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.